Hello, Matthews. Gato's here. Welcome to Chapter 7, Absolute Value and Reciprocal Functions. In this video, I'm going to cover Section 7.1. I'm going to introduce to you what an absolute value is, do a couple examples with numbers only in this video before I introduce variables in the next section. So let's talk about what an absolute value is. You can notice I wrote it there with two vertical lines. So the two vertical lines and the x on the inside. That's said as the absolute value of x. Now that is defined as the distance a number is from zero. So let's think. When I want to measure the distance between two items, that will always be a positive value. Distance can't be negative. So since distance can't be negative, neither can absolute value. So I want you to think of those vertical lines as rulers to remind us that we're measuring the distance and also to remind us that it has to be a positive value. Now, how do we access absolute value on our graphing calculator? Well, we hit our math button, we toggle over to number, and option number one, ABS, in this case is not automatic brake system, but absolute value. If you have a TI-83 graphing calculator, when you hit that, you're going to go onto your main screen. It will look like that. You will enter in whatever your number is and close your bracket. If you have a TI-84 or newer, when you enter in absolute value option number one, on your main screen, you're going to have a template that looks like that. You just put whatever your number is in there, and then you're able to evaluate your absolute value. So let's look at an example. I want to evaluate 4 and negative 4, the absolute value of each. So I have a number line there to help me. So let's look at the absolute value of 4. 4 is to the right of 0. It is 4 units away from 0. Negative 4 is to the left of 0. It is 4 units away from 0. So since both numbers are 4 units away from 0, that means the absolute value of both numbers must be 4. So the absolute value of positive 4 is 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is also 4. Well, this illustrates a really nice point that I'm trying to make. The input, whatever you put inside the absolute value, that can be positive or negative. But the output for absolute value will always be a positive value. So I want you to pause the video and quickly evaluate these to make sure that you understand what absolute value is. So the absolute value of 7. 7 is to the right of 0. It's 7 units away from 0, so its absolute value is 7. Negative 9 is to the left of 0. It is 9 units away from 0, so the absolute value is 9. Absolute value of 0. Well, 0 is itself 0, so it is no distance away from 0, so the absolute value would be 0. Let's try a question where we're ordering numbers. Some of them have absolute values, some of them don't. We're gonna write this from least smallest to greatest big. So let's evaluate each one before I order it. So the absolute value of 6.5 is 6.5. Five doesn't have an absolute value. The absolute value of 4.75 is 4.75. Negative 3.4 doesn't have an absolute value, so it stays the same. The absolute value of negative 12 over 5. Well, negative 12 over 5 is negative 2.4, and the absolute value of that is just positive 2.4. The absolute value of negative 0.1 is 0.1, and the absolute value of negative 2.5 is just 2.5. So let's put this in order from smallest to biggest. So let's scan our list here and put them in order. Before I do that, I have a little tip for you. Always write the numbers in the correct order using their original form. So let's look. The smallest number I see is negative 3.4. Then looking at it again, the next number I see is 0 0.1. So I always go from where they came from. Then I see 2.4. The next smallest one I see is 2.5, so I'll take that one from there. And I see positive 4.75, and then positive 5, and last but not least, the absolute value of 6.5. So that would be the order from smallest to biggest in original form. 
Well, let's up the fun factor and try questions where we're evaluating. Now, the absolute value, we're going to evaluate each one of them and then subtract the numbers. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8. And then we're going to subtract them. So 5 take away 8, negative 3. So the absolute value must be positive, but the answer to a question that has absolute values within it could be negative. Always a good idea to check that on the calculator, and I see that I've done that correctly. Let's try another one. So this one here, I have 4 take away 6 times the absolute value of 2 minus 11. Very tempting to do 4 take away 6 first, but that would not be correct because we need to follow order of operations. So my tip for you is to treat the absolute value function like a bracket. Let's just put this down here. So treat the absolute value like a bracket and follow order of operations. An order of operations would tell us to work on the brackets first. So I'm going to work inside here to take away 11, which is negative 9. So I have 4 take away 6 times negative, absolute value of negative 9. So the absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9, and these two numbers side by side mean multiply. So I really have 4 take away 6 times 9, which is 54. And 4 take away 54 is negative 50. So be very careful to follow order of operations. And I always like to check on the calculator, and I see that I get the correct answer, so I know I've done that correctly. Let's look at a word problem. So in this one here, Death Valley is 86 meters below sea level, and the summit of Mount St. Helens is 2,549 above sea level. And I want to determine the distance between the altitudes. So let's talk about how do we find distance. So distance is going to be absolute value because it has to be positive. The difference between the end point and the beginning point. So let's look. I labeled Mount St. Helen as the end point and Death Valley as the beginning point. So let's look at the distance. So the distance is 2,549 take away negative 86. Negative 86 because Death Valley is below sea level. And we show that by keeping it negative. So that's really the distance subtracted. Two negatives make a positive becomes the distance is the absolute value of 2,635. Well, that's just positive 2,635, and I add on my units of meters. Now, would it matter which one I call the end point and which one I call the beginning point? I want to test that by switching it around. So I want to try it with a different start and end point. So this time I'll call my end point the Death Valley and the beginning point, Mount St. Helens, and see if we end up with the same difference. So the distance equals the absolute value of the end point, Death Valley is below sea level, so it's negative 86. Subtract the beginning point, which is 2,549. So subtracting those, I end up with negative 2,635, and the absolute value of a negative is a positive, of course, with units. So my tip for you is either point can be the beginning or the end point. You see that it doesn't matter. Let's try another one. This will be our last example, and we'll talk about the TSX, which is the Toronto Stock Exchange. So let's say we have a particular stock value and it fluctuates. That means it goes up and down a lot. So we track this stock and we notice that it opens at $3.55, goes down to $12.70, up to 14.05 and closes the month at a drop at $13.85. So this is what happens with stocks. They go up and they go down. If I want to know the total change in value, that's how much up and down I go. What I'm going to do is look at the distance between each one of these points. So let's look at the first set. So the first set is it starts at $3.55, drops to $12.70. So my total change will be my end minus my beginning. Now the next part is it starts at 1270 and goes up to 1405. So I add on end minus beginning. 
1405 becomes the new beginning and it ends at 1385. So end minus begin. What I'm going to do now is evaluate each of these absolute values. So I'm going to have the total change is when I subtract those negative, which makes sense because it went down. And then the next one, when I subtract them, it's positive, which makes sense again because it's going up. And then my last one going down. So taking the absolute value of each one and adding them together, my total change would be $2.40. Now I want to make mention that total change is different than the net change. Net change looks at the first beginning. It doesn't care how much up and down it goes, and it goes to this end beginning. So if I wanted to know the net change, let's just talk about that, it would be the absolute value of my final end point minus my final beginning point. So that's the absolute value of 30 cents so the net change would be 30 cents, whereas the total change, which includes all of the up and down movement, would be $2.40. So that is your little introduction to absolute value. And I really think that we can all be a little bit more like the absolute value, hopelessly positive. You guys can move on to your practice questions. The detailed solutions are on D2L. And then move on to the textbook questions as needed. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.